very happy Easter to all of you. Uh, Pontius Pilate said to Joseph of Arimathea, Joseph, I don't understand. You're one of the richest men in the region, and you've spent a fortune on a new tomb for you and your family, and you want to give it to this man, Jesus? Joseph of Arimathea replied, it's just for the weekend. <laughs> the other quote that I came across that I thought was pretty cute is, you watch your kid pick up 45 Easter eggs in less than a minute when it takes hours for them to clean their room. <laughs> and the last one is, at our age, we can hide our own Easter eggs, wait half an hour and have no clue where we put them. <laughs> just want to give you just a few ideas about Easter. And I want to use the word Easter. Easter is spelled E-A-S-T-E-R. The first letter in Easter is E, and that stands for the empty tomb. The tomb was empty. That's a historical fact. Nobody denies that the tomb was empty. The explanation either that Jesus either rose from the dead or somebody stole his body. So if somebody stole his body, it would either have been his friends who stole the body or his enemies who stole the body. Of course, if his enemies stole the body, once the disciples said that Jesus has risen, they would have produced the dead body of Jesus, and that would have ended Christianity right then and there. So how likely is it that his friends would have stolen the body? Could they have really overpowered the Roman soldiers, the, the guard that was guarding the tomb, especially when the apostles were so timid and scared, huddling in the upper room? Would they have been able to break open the Roman seal that covered this huge millstone? Would they have been able to move the millstone? And then would they have committed the mortal sin of stealing the body and then lying about it and testifying before others that Jesus had truly risen from the dead? And would they, of course, have had the time to unwrap the body, leave all the linens, and then take the body of Jesus with them? So it's very unlikely that the Friends stole the body, the disciples stole the body, of course not. The tomb was empty because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. The A in Easter stands for the appearances of Jesus. Jesus appeared to many eyewitnesses. We heard today Jesus appeared to Saint Mary Magdalene. We know Jesus appeared to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Then he appeared to all the apostles on the night of the resurrection when Thomas was not there. Then he appeared the following Sunday, Divine Mercy Sunday, when Thomas was there. And then he appeared, it says, to 500 disciples, 500 brothers at once. And of course, we believe he must have appeared to his blessed mother early in the morning when he first rose from the dead. Before any other public appearances, I'm sure he would have appeared to his blessed mother and they probably had coffee together early in the morning. The S in Easter, stands for the shroud, the shroud of Turin, which scientific evidence shows, we, and I certainly believe that so much evidence in support of its authenticity. We heard in the gospel today that the two disciples ran to the tomb. John, of course, ran faster. He was only 16 years old. St. Peter, who was older, he probably had smoked two packs a day on the fishing boat for 30 years. He eventually got there huffing and puffing. When they went in, it says they saw and believed. What did they see that made them believe? Of course, it was the empty shell of the linens. The body was not in it, not in the linens. And yet the linens were still wrapped up, and, but the body was not there. And I would encourage you to read and study about the Holy Shroud of Turin. It's the most studied object in the world, over one million hours of peer-reviewed scientific information, which in my opinion really gives us an insight into the, the passion of the Lord, his scourging at the pillar, his crowning with thorns, the carrying of the cross, the crucifixion, being pierced by the lance, all that is revealed on the Holy Shroud. And of course, even today in the year 2024, the scientists cannot duplicate this really miraculous image, which is a photographic negative. The closest that the scientists have come up with is that it was produced by a burst of light and radiation energy that came forth from the body in a split second. 
they say one forty billionth of a second and that the power of this burst of light would have been between four billion and eight billion watts so that is the the holy shroud it's truly a miracle in our midst and make sure you watch the videos go to youtube watch these incredible explanations of the doctors and the medical doctors the forensic doctors that have examined the holy shroud the t in easter is the fact that jesus is the true temple he said destroy this temple and in three days i will raise it up and when people would see the temple of jerusalem when they would walk up to the mount zion the holy mountain what would they see from the right side of the temple was flowing blood and water because of all the animal sacrifices and they would wash the blood with water and out of a, a chute out the right side of the temple would flow blood and water. When Jesus was on the cross, the soldier took a lance and thrust it to the right side of Christ and out flowed blood and water. Jesus is the true temple. But we know that the Romans destroyed the temple of Jerusalem in 70 AD. That's when all animal sacrifices ended. All the lambs, the millions of lambs that were slaughtered there, that all ended in 70 AD. But Jesus is the true Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And Jesus is the true temple and his body is glorious and resurrected and is immortal for all eternity. The next letter is E and that stands for the Eucharist. Two words we should never separate is Easter and Eucharist because the Eucharist is the glorified body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus under the appearances of bread and wine. It's not a symbol, it's not a reminder. It is truly, really, substantially, truly the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus in his glorified, resurrected body. Remember that Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday, Easter Sunday. That's why every Sunday is holy. That's why we want to keep every Sunday as a day of rest and as a day of worship of God. So never miss mass on Sunday, never miss mass on the holy days. And in fact, I would encourage you to go to daily mass, receive your Lord and Savior every day in Holy Communion. So again, never miss mass on Sunday, the day of the Lord, the day of the resurrection. I love the sign I saw outside a church once. It said, we're open between Christmas and Easter. And then the last letter is R. So again, remember the E is the empty tomb, the A are the appearances of Jesus, the S is the shroud, the T is that Jesus is the true temple, the E is the Eucharist, and the R stands for the word rise. Because Jesus rose from the dead, and the Bible says, if we have died with Christ, we shall also rise with Christ. Death is not the end. Good Friday was not the end of the story. As Paul Harvey used to say, that's not the end of the story that Jesus Christ rose from the dead on Easter morning. It's very comforting to know that one day, God willing, every one of us will have a resurrected, glorified body. If we have died with Christ, we shall also rise with Christ. Maybe some of you have lost loved ones, maybe a parent, maybe a spouse, maybe a child, God forbid. We've all lost people that we loved, but we know that death is not the end. Jesus Christ conquered death by rising from the dead on Easter morn. So that gives us great hope and great comfort and consolation. I'll just end with the words of one of my dad's songs. He died about five or six years ago. And back in the 70s, he went out to Hollywood. He made four albums in Hollywood back in the 1970s and 80s. In 1985, he wrote this called, song called, Someday I'll Rise, one of my favorite songs of his. I'll just end by reading you these few verses. When the war is over, that nobody wins. When the war is over and one more begins. When the night grows colder and all hope seems gone, I get down to praying and I see the dawn. Someday I'll rise, someday I'll rise, someday I'll rise like the Lord. One day I'll see, one day I'll know, I'll know the glory of the Lord. When the truth's been trodden and pressed to the ground, justice all forgotten and no love is found. When the burden's heavy and the way is long, 
I get down to praying and I sing my song. When the mind's been searching and can't find any peace, when the heart's been hurting and troubles increase, when the body's weary and the days go wrong, I get down to praying and I sing my song. Someday I'll rise, someday I'll rise, someday I'll rise like the Lord. One day I'll see, one day I'll know, I'll know the glory of the Lord.